Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. This is my test world, and this is Maxwell's Manual of Malicious Maladies. Try saying that quickly, or if you've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> so we're looking at an add-on today. Uh, it's right in here. Literally, Maxwell's Manual of Malicious Maladies. Um, not a huge amount of options for this one, which is fine. That's not mean it's not powerful. Now, this is very much about flavor. This is not core D&D. &D. Um, this is not core um, animation stuff, automations or anything like that. It's purely flavor add-on if you're interested. What the hell am I talking about? Okay, so first of all, let's just have a quick look at those configuration settings. Like I say, there aren't many, um, but it enables us to add on some malicious maladies, as in like ongoing injuries, as part of our combat, traps, whatever it might be. And these options here are quite simple. We can apply them whenever damage is done. So it says prompt for a lingering injury when the damage received is more than half of the maximum hit points. So you might choose to use that. Or it applies only if the actor falls to zero hit points. In other words, for players, when they fall unconscious, they might have a permanent injury going forward. You can have it for fumbled saving throws. Now, it does say here about requiring MIDI QOL to prompt those, but you can absolutely do that manually anyway. Do you want it on a critical hit? Um, do injuries apply to NPCs, so monsters and things like that, and, um, and destroying the effect on the character once that injury has been healed or it's passed? So I've got all mine switched on just for the purposes of demonstrating this, and I'll come back to those options later. So let's um, grab our guys here, and we can start a quick combat. Of course, I've got my other add-ons and things, so I do have um, my combat tracker, etc. Let's get this party started. My dice is in the way. There we go. We get this party started, and we can just have a general all-round bundle with these. I want to clear my chat for you. So how does this actually work? Essentially, whenever any of those conditions are done, it's going to prompt us for a roll. So let's just uh, start some combat and um, and see what we can do to prompt a attack or not. It might take a while. No, absolutely, of course not. We're not going to start with anything. Bugbear much more likely to inflict some damage. Oh, we've not used him before. So uh, Morning Star, that's a decent size amount of damage. There's an 18 to hit. Okay, so Sorryman has uh, taken quite a big whack there. Why is he uh, need to show his health? That makes a lot more sense. There we go. So he's taken quite a big health. Okay, so that's good. Um, next. Bear. Bear's going to do some damage, isn't it? Let's pick on the goblin with the bear. Okay, because anybody can fight anybody. That bear is probably... Let's uh, just clear that chat log for a moment that bear is going to do a big claw attack on that goblin significant amounts of damage boom right we've got a pop up Ta -da! so the goblin sustained a lingering injury because remember i had it now he's fallen to zero hit points so of course it's dead which is why you probably wouldn't want that on for monsters but this is straight away saying the reason the damage exceeded half of the maximum hit points that's one reason um, and it was slashing damage. So it looks at what caused the injury and is prompting for me to roll on the injury table. So I'm going to clear my chat again just so it's easy for you guys to see. And that goblin apparently has sustained a leg laceration. So there's a lovely bit of description here. Um, and it talks about the fact that the blood belongs on the inside of your body. It's quite whimsical. It's quite nice. But we now have this leg laceration. You've taken a long, painful slash to one of your legs. Your speed is reduced by 10 foot. This injury lasts four days. Uh, the treatment for it is a DC 50 medicine check, which will reduce the duration by... Oh, it says six days because they're random, randomized. So that's interesting. They're suggesting them that actually you can reduce that four days effectively down to zero with a good medicine check. That medicine skill is suddenly quite a lot more important for dealing with these injuries. Now, it hasn't applied that to the goblin. Here he is. Um, yes, he's unconscious. But just next to this leg, 
laceration on the right hand side you can see it looks like two little virus things two little cogs if I click that the goblin now has just move that corpse over here now has this icon on it and if we look on the goblin and look at effects he's got a lingering injury and it adds time on it as well so that will eventually time out but of course you know that's a that's a long way off it's in days it's not in rounds or anything like that so actually it's 345,600 seconds because <laughs> it's all done in seconds okay but this goblin now has this and you can open this up and actually see that this effect has been applied to the goblin um, so it's all actually on there and it does actually make a difference now it does say speed is reduced by 10 feet now at the moment this goblin is uh, still says 30 feet there it's not changed that uh, apart from the fact that the goblin is dead um, we know that that goblin's got that injury and it's going to show on there. So it's it's nice, isn't it? And look how quickly automated that was. And I've done no setup for that. I've got All it's looking at is the roles that are happening. It's looking at the MIDI, in this case, the MIDI QOL roles. And then it's going, oh, right, what happened? Who should I apply that to? Um, Bugbear can have a go. Let's, let's continue to pick on Sorryman here. Oh. No, that's so Sorryman's go. What am I doing? What am I doing? So Sorryman, have a go at this bugbear instead. Um, and we can do that damage. Bosh. It's not prompted for it. Let's just make that attack again. Just to uh, push this through. Sorryman, you missed, really. Oops. There we go. That's a bit better. It's going to take some more damage. All right, it's not prompting for the mass amount of damage yet, but that's okay. Uh, it's not potentially quite working the way I was thought it would. But I'm just going to beat this bugbear. To... Come on, sorry, man, you're better than that, mate. Come on. <laughs> I'm just going to beat this bugbear to death, basically. Eventually, eventually, he's going to do it. Fun, this, isn't it? Uh, sorry man I, I was using you because you generally hit quite reliably <laughs> and there we go that's a bit better right boom now we're going to flick double damage and everything and as you can see this is prompt the reason this time is because it was a critical hit now it would have done it also because it's dropped to zero hit points but it was a critical hit this is bludgeoning damage so let's clear this chat again roll out injury bludgeoning damage on this instance it's a broken nose so again i can click that little cog thing and it's put it up there now it uses a different icon depending on the injury type so we've got this hammer type icon whenever it's a bludgeoning type of wound we've got this slashing looks like a bit like a claws slash icon whenever it's slashing damage it's really nice so just at the view you can see oh yeah i've got a permanent slashing injury a per permanent crushing injury um, and this one is about uh, sharp impact to your face, left you with a painful broken nose. Again, it's got a treatment in there. It's only an 8 DC for a medicine check there. 50% um, chance of healing, slightly crooked in about three days. Um, but every time your nose is broken, the DC increases. So it gets harder and harder to end up with a beautiful nose <laughs> if it keeps getting smashed in by, in this case... A, uh, a terrifying barbarian with a very big stick um, smacking you in the chops. Nice. I really like it. But there are other ways to use this. So obviously I'm using it in combat um, and it will automatically come up like that. But you don't need to. If in the chat, if I do slash MMMM for Maxwell's Manual of Malicious Maladies, it will bring up this... Let me just move over here so I've got the characters behind it a bit clearer for you. It brings up this menu straight away where I can choose the damage type. So it's going to work for acid, bludgeoning, cold, force, etc, etc. And some of them will ask for a re-roll on the large limb table, um, on the small appendage table, or on the scar chart, which is really interesting. Let's do a piercing one, just see what they want. Visceral pain. Oh, blimey. Your liver, your spleen, something or other. Um, 
and that's going to uh, yeah so we, again we would apply that to our character etc so it's nice and quick mmmm boom there it is oh, okay well let's do acid damage there we go with caustic coating um, and it talks about the effect that lasts how long it lasts etc so we can just roll straight from there if we if we don't have to be in combat it might be i don't know they they knock over one of them fails a dexterity check and falls in a fire or something like that um and you're like well hang on a minute that's quite serious let's do fire one what have we got here um it happens to be set on the bugbear but uh, burn scar left cheek great there we go we've got a burn scar um, and it talks about in here uh, the area of your body's left with a creased and wrinkled burn scar. Now it's up to you whether that affects things like charisma, intimidation checks, and stuff like that. But you can just roll whenever you like. Now there is a third way because all these are are roll tables in a compendium. I say that's all they are. I mean, it's obviously it's really clever the way it integrates with everything else. If I open my compendium, I just drop mine into a folder here. I've got three different things here. One, there is the the manual itself. So it's just got some credits in it. It's talking about types of lingering injuries and stuff like that in here. Uh, it talks about surgery. So um, prepping the patient and stuff. So it's got these additional rules for potentially dealing with some of these serious injuries, which is really nice. Amputation, you know, if you want to add that kind of level of uh, realism. Uh, there's also some items and accessibilities. It talks a bit about prosthetics and things like that. So that's nice. We've got that. Um, that was that one. We've also got this one here, which has got a whole bunch of items. Look, cane, a captain's hook. These are some of the prosthetics and things that you might get. Uh, crutches, um, gloves of signing, iron sights, uh, a simple arm prosthetic, a shield strap. You know, you've lost your hand, you can use a shield strap. Surgeon's tools. So there's just some extra bits of equipment. There's even a wheelchair, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, a working animal. You know, <laughs> so it's just a bunch of extra items that you may want your players to be able. Well, they might want to go out and purchase some of these things to um, offset the fact that they've got this lingering injury. If they've got a seriously damaged leg, you might, you know, they might be going, "Oh, I'm going to see if I can buy a crutch." Well, it's there. Go do it. And this third one here is actually the injury tables themselves. So as you can see, these are all in here. So if we look at acid one, if I just click on this it's going to open up and this is the roll table which means if you if i if i right click on this um and uh, i can import all content if i do that let's just do that for a second do 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 um, i was expecting to put it there where's it put it doesn't matter but anyway um, if you can unlock it because I'm not I'm in the locked version at the moment um, I can't edit this but you can see what's in here but with stop teleporting around all over the place um, but you can unlock it so you can change these if you like so strong caustic burn um, etc and it's got all of the verbals and the writing there and things that you might need so it's just a table a roll table with all of those different things on which is really good you can edit it you can take out ones that you think are too much you can add your own but use this as a starting point now with things like the small appendage table you know it's talking about fingers and toes that are getting i don't know chopped off um large limb table we're talking about left arm below the you know below the elbow <laughs> uh, it's going to be a, a choppy choppy kind of damage and things um entire feet entire limbs and stuff so uh, you potentially can have like a crippled or even a chopped off limb uh, and there's a scar chart here as well so if you get a scar it's like right well where is that scar it can randomize it so it kind of builds up quite nicely and of course you can ask your players to roll on the table if you want to you might say right uh, roll me 3d6 and then let's we can go and see what they've what they've rolled it's like oh right okay you rolled a 14 so you've got your bruised back and you can just use that um, and do it that way of course you can just roll from here as well so just doing that 
uh, and you can see that this has rolled a concussion. Okay, mm -hmm. so you don't need to do it through combat, lightning, you can come straight in here, you can roll if you want to. So you can access it through chat with that slash MMMM. -M -M. You can automatically access it through combat when the conditions hit, or you can come directly into the tables, roll from here, or edit them. So let's go back and look at a couple of those options there under our configure settings. Will I want it on? You've got to balance this, okay? Because it's entertaining, but what you don't want is every fight, half the party come out with missing limbs. <laughs> And I, I guess it depends on the kind of campaign you're playing, but you do need to be careful with this. So I probably would not have, for my guys, the, the massive damage. Yeah, you hit zero hit points for the players. Absolutely, that's a good time to roll on this. Fumbled saving throw, I'm going to say no. I prefer fumbled saving throws, as well as like crits and stuff, to be more role-playing and descriptive than actually mechanically impinging. Um... On a critical, so when you roll a critical hit, you straight away get to roll on the critical table. You might want that. You know, if that bugbear is swiping at you with his great big morning star and he hits a critical hit, you might say that deserves, a, you know, a, an injury. Up to you. What I would say is you what one thing to contemplate. If you're going to use lingering injuries for criticals, do you also want the double damage for criticals? Because it's massively ramping up the pain from one critical. Bear in mind, there's a 1 in 20 chance of that happening. So in big fights, it's going to happen to somebody. Um, so just think about that. Think about the balance. You want to keep it fun, but you you know, but, um, you know, don't want to overwhelm the players with constantly having bits chopped off of them. Um, and you could easily get to a point where they're abandoning characters, not because they've died, but because they've got so many bits of their body, they're not practical to carry on. Uh, and I wouldn't want somebody to feel forced in dropping their character in that way. Personally, I'm not going to have criticals on. If I did use criticals, I'd be saying it rolls on the table instead of double damage. But that would be a, that would be a player party decision which way we're going to do criticals. I wouldn't impose that on them. Um, I would want them to make a decision. But I'm going to have it. You hit zero hit points. We're rolling on that to see what that is. Uh, trigger types of injuries on NPCs. That's just going to slow combat up. Um, so I'm going to have that as a no. Uh, and do I destroy items? Yes. So for me, at least to start with, I'm only going to have that when player characters hit zero hit points. They're going to get a lingering injury. Um, that's how I'm going to use it. You use it however the heck you want, of course. And you may not be playing, you may not be using the Lingering Injuries table as part of Dungeons and Dragons. You might be using it as something else that is far more applicable to have those those Lingering Injuries might be much more prevalent because it might also be much easier to address them and fix them. If you're playing in modern world, there's better medical care. Um, you might be playing something in the future. You know, if you think of things like, um, you know, Star Trek and they just, chuck them in a thing and it goes boop, 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 tells them all their injuries and stuff and they fix it um so very very much depends on the kind of game you want to play and how deadly for curse of strad there ain't an awful lot of help around um so lingering injuries are going to be even more terrifying because you can't just pop to the local temple and get healed you also might want to consider the makeup of your party if they go adventuring with very little magical healing because everybody's decided to play a rogue or something, um, that's fine, that's their decision, but lingering injuries are going to be massively more impactful. So again, just try and remember that balance between you know, the, the fun, the mechanics of things, survivability, etc. Um, but anyway, I thought it was really nice. I, I'm going to use it um, only in those situations where player characters hit the deck, uh, because I like it. I think it adds a really nice little extra bit of flavour without affecting the character's ability uh, to adventure. Unless they're already hitting the deck. If they're already hitting the deck, they've already got problems anyway. So I'm rambling now. Um, yeah, leave a comment. Do you like this? Do you already use this? How would you want to use it? Have you got ideas? Because you guys might be using it in a way that I haven't really thought of. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'll try that, actually. Um, I'm going to start with it quite toned back and then ramp it up if I feel that's useful. 
but yeah let me know uh, leave a like of course and if you're not subscribed please do so it really does help the channel and helps make sure that i'm in enthused to continue doing videos like this take care thank you very much see you in the next one